Okay, now you should be able to hear me light see. Yes, there we go. Sorry. Okay, we're practicing our model of prayer. Dear Father in heaven. Uh, I, I can't think. What You can even use what I put on the screen. You're so great. You're so great. So you've adored God. You've praised him because he's great. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Sila, let's let's confess something. Thank you for forgiving us, even though we are so cool. Okay, awesome. So you've, you did C and T. You, you thanked him and you admitted your sins. Great. Christian, supplication, asking God for something. Dear Lord, please help us all to have a great day today. Continue to keep us safe for the rest of today and the rest of this week. Amen. Awesome. That was a great prayer, right? We said God's great. Uh, we confess we're sinful and we thank God for forgiving us. And then we ask God to, to grant us a great day. Awesome. So this isn't doesn't have to be complicated or super long. Uh, you know, the Nicene Creed is great, and it's a great prayer, but all of your prayers don't need to be that length. You can pray a simple prayer, and it can be godly, and we know that God will hear us. Makes sense? Any, what, what are your questions on prayer? I want you to feel confident praying. It's an important part of being a Christian, a huge blessing that unbelievers don't have, that you do have. No questions? All right, let's do one more prayer then. Um, I'll start and we'll go this direction. Um, dear Father in heaven, you are abounding in mercy and goodness. Did you just do adoration? Mm -hmm. So should I do confession? Sure. Um, I'm not perfect and I'm still going to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving us this day to come together in the worship. Please help us whenever we go home. We'll be happy for what we've all learned from more of your holy word. Amen. Wonderful. Getting the idea? It, maybe it seems a little strange to go around the room and pray, but it's cool to, to hear what's on your minds. And to know that God's hearing what's on your minds. Uh, even though he already knows, even before you ask it, he, he wants us to do this for, for our benefit. Um, it, it helps us grow in our trust for him. All right. Let's keep going with some test review. So that's basically, it was the first page, um, was the ACT, ACTS and writing a prayer. We just practice. Great. Um, you can look at the charts on your own. Uh, many of the charts went unfilled out. Uh, that's simply a product of studying. Uh, if you filled out the chart, you probably studied that part of it. If you didn't fill out the chart, you probably didn't study that part. Um, so uh, you can look at that on your own. And if you want, there are filled in charts right there. If you wanna help improve yourself. How about this question? Um, this is question number four. This is the most important question you will ever have to answer in your whole life. More important than what do you want to do when you're older? More important than who will you marry? Explain why you will go to heaven. Use at least one passage from scripture. Um, you notice that on the last three tests, you've had the same question. Yeah. Uh, this question, right? What has been on like every single test you've had. Yeah, why do you, think this why do you think this question has been on all the tests? Because it's an important question. Exactly. It is an important question. And guess what? You know the answer to this one. Why are you going to heaven? Sila? Because I have faith in Jesus our Savior. And he says that we're going to heaven if we believe in him. Okay. What if I don't believe in him? No, I don't. I think you don't. But what if I do a lot of good things? That doesn't matter. Okay. Good works. It's like good, but it doesn't matter in the long run. What about like children? Uh, they don't really do anything bad yet. You're born sinful. Okay. Yeah. So uh, th this is uh, this is how I'd answer the question. Why should you go to heaven? First of all, just just acknowledging your sins. All people are sinful at birth. 
I don't deserve to go to heaven. But why do I get to go to heaven? Because of Jesus. Three things that Jesus did. He lived perfectly in our place. He died on the cross and he rose. Jesus lived perfectly in our place, died on the cross and rose. Um, whenever you're answering this question, uh, you can use this format. Um, because it, it, it's good to say, yeah, Jesus died on the cross. Um, but why did he die on the cross? Well, because I'm sinful. And why does his death matter? Well, it matters because he was, he was perfect sinful. first. He wasn't sinful. And well, is he still dead? No, he rose. Uh, so when you're answering this question, I want you to answer it like so. How about a Bible passage for this one? Gabe? John 3.16. Excellent. I like it. Great. And there are so many passages that could work for this. Um, but this is the most important question. Go with something that you all know by heart. John 3.16. Um, all right. Max, why will you go to heaven? Um, because Jesus died for my sins and I trust in him. Okay. I believe in him. Why did Jesus die for your sins? Because. Hold on. How about this? Why weren't you good enough on your own? Because we were born sinful. Okay. And hmm, why does it matter that he died? Because he lived a perfect life and was not sinful. Okay. What happened after he died? He rose again from the dead. Mm -hmm. And because he rose, you can be confident mm -hmm. that you're going to heaven. Yep. Awesome. How about you, Christian? Why will you go to heaven? Because Jesus gave his life on the cross for us. Mm -hmm. And why do we need Jesus to give his life on the cross for us? Because since he was half man and half God, when he died, he took all of our sins with him. So whenever he came back, we were we were able to go back to heaven. Okay, and Jesus isn't just half man, half God. He's 100% man and 100% God. And we needed him to be both. Because if he wasn't true man, he wouldn't have been under the law. Um, he's not 50% of 50%. No, he's 100 and 100. And it doesn't really make sense to us. Uh, but that's how the Bible it's, talks it's about it. Not really, it's not math. Yeah, so Jesus, he needed to be fully man so that he could do... Point number B up there, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and point number A. And he needed to be God so that point number A, B, and C counted for us. Mm -hmm. If he wasn't God, he would have just, he would have gotten to go to heaven, but because he's perfect, but that wouldn't have done anything for us. So we needed him to be fully God, fully man. Okay. Gabe, why will you go to heaven? Because I. Uh, well, not I, but because Jesus lived perfect life for me and I have me and then rose again. Mm -hmm. Why did you need that to happen? Because without him, because I was born simple. Nice. Yep. How about you, Emma? Why will you get to go to heaven? Because God, Jesus died on the cross for us. Okay. And why did that matter? Um, because he died for because he died for our sins because we were going to die like that but. okay so we're sinful yes. and why does it count that he died on the cross what does that do anything for me because he took away our sins and he... did he just die for us is that all he did oh he rose from the dead what did he do before he died he went out. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, because God demands perfection. So Jesus needed to be perfect for us in our place. How about you, Lillian? Why will you go to heaven? I'm, uh, no one, no one can like. No one can work to get to heaven, but by nature, we are all born sinful, so mm -hmm. no one can really work to get to heaven. It's, But God has 
Jesus died for our sins so we may uh, go to heaven uh, mm -hmm. when we all when we, when we go to, you know when we when we die we can all go to heaven <clears throat> what did Jesus do before he died for our sins he he never he never sinned he never did anything wrong mm -hmm. he he was never sinful okay and how about after he died he when he died he took all the he, he took all the sins away mm -hmm. so we may live uh, with him forever in heaven yeah did, did Jesus stay dead no he, he rose from the dead yeah because if Jesus didn't rise well then our faith is is useless nope we needed him to, to live perfectly die and rise we need all of those yeah. uh, so Awesome. How about you, Gabe Emerson? Why will you go to heaven? Okay, Gabe, how about this? Can you type out why you'll go to heaven? Type it out in the chat and I'll take a look at it. Uh, how about you, Ethan? Why will you go to heaven? So normally I wouldn't, but because... Jesus lived a perfect life, life, died on the cross, and risen, rose to the dead. And I will go to heaven. Excellent. Excellent answer. Very complete. We like complete answers. How about you, Max? Why will you go to heaven? But I just answered that. I know. Okay. When something's really important, you ask it a whole bunch of times. Okay. Because Jesus died for my sins and I believe in him and he rose again from the dead and he died on the cross for my sins. Before he died, what did he do? And he lived a perfect life. Yes, there we go. Very nice. So when you ask, when this question is on the final test, I want you to say these three things. He lived a perfect life that I never could. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. And then write John 3.16 or any passage that tells you this truth. Okay. I don't want to see any incomplete answers for this on the test. Um, this is the most important thing in your life, knowing this fact. What did Jesus do for me? Why did he do it? Uh, if you can't answer this question, um, then there's really no point, I guess, in, in taking the rest of confirmation class. This is the whole point. Uh, the whole idea of your whole life is knowing this. I was not worthy on my own, but Jesus came. He lived perfectly in my place. He died on a cross to forgive my sins, and he rose on Easter so that now God sees me as perfect. Does that make sense? Any questions? And maybe before the test, practice writing this out so you know exactly what you're going to say. It's not bad to have a memorized answer for this one. Okay, let's do something else from the test. Oh, we talked about this. Yep. And Gabe, before he did that, he lived perfectly. And after he died, he rose. Don't forget those parts, too. Okay. This was another question on the test. I don't think this was on the study guide. So this is one where I was, uh, we're kind of expecting you to piece some things together. Uh, it's not bad to have challenging questions that you don't expect. Living as a Christian can be difficult. Imagine that a friend told you, I'm really struggling right now. My faith feels weak and I don't know what to do. What would you say to your friend? What encouragement would you give them? Passage from scripture. Let's just talk about this. This is, uh, this is an interesting question, right? We, we all come here to church together. And one of the cool things about going to church with other people is that when you're feeling down, they can pick you up and remind you about what God has told you. So how do you answer your friend? What are some things you'd say? Seela? Um, sometimes things are well answered. Uh, and our faith may feel weak, but we also have to remember what Jesus did for us. And, like, I guess to help, like, strengthen your faith is to, like, read his word mm -hmm. and study him and everything. And try to fill as much as like your mind with his word as possible and not let bad things in. And I choose what passage like Psalms 23. Why that passage? 
Um, because it's like a thing. Passing. What's that passage about? I don't know the one, but it's like the Lord maketh me lay down in green pastures. Mm -hmm. Um, I always forget like scripture. Oh, like, no. I know yeah, passage, yeah. Like, yeah, it's a very comforting passage. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff that come for me. Yeah. Okay. Other thoughts? What would you tell your friend? I really love when we get to learn things in the Bible for ourselves. Uh, but another neat privilege is to get to share those things with others. So uh, what did you tell your friend? I, I know that you know you know what the Bible says. You've got some, some good things to say. I would, I would say uh, be, put your faith in God and know that he is real and he is with you and he's with you with like whatever you're going through because he'll always be by your side no matter what situation you're in because he loves us all that's a great point Lillian and there's actually a bible passage that says that and, oh. surely, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age Matthew 28, 20. Yeah, okay. That's great. Yeah, Jesus is with you. You're not alone. I like that. Other encouragement that you could give your friend? You're not alone. Sila? Um, you could also tell them like, if you need help in like, Say like studying Hebrew or like writing your faith that you can always find like one of your fellow Christians for help to like I guess read the gospel and everything. Yeah, well, hey, let's get together and let's let's see what God says. Uh, let's read through some passages together about Jesus doing amazing things and Jesus forgiving us. And yeah, that's great. And, Maybe another thing you could encourage them is, hey, guess what? God's given you something really special when you feel down. Talked about it in the whole first page of the test. Guess what you can do? You can pray. You can talk to God and he'll hear you. Other thoughts on this? Okay, let's keep moving. Well, what is the law? Tell me the answer in three words. What's the law, Max? Um, There's a short three-word answer. Man. Nope, short three-word answer that you can just, whenever someone says the law, there's another three words that work for the gospel and they have the same beginning letters. See, God, Lord? Sorry. Oh, go ahead, Lillian. Uh, God's rules. Okay, that's true. We got a little three-word phrase, though, that really helps us remember what this is. Sila? Shows our sins. This is a full answer, but shows our sins. When we see our sins, we know, I am not good enough. I need a Savior. So when someone says, what's the law? You say, it's the thing that shows us our sins. What I should do, what I haven't done, what God deserves to do to me. Shows our sins. Shows our sins. So when this is on the final test, you write SOS. Shows our sins. Okay? Good? Understand? Awesome. I'm laying out exactly what... You, this is great. We're already answering questions for the test, right? Final test. It's going to be a cakewalk, right? And remember the law is curbing your guide, too. How about the gospel? Another three words... They start with the same letters, Max. All I know is the story of Jesus. That is what the gospel is. Okay. Okay. Um, and who is Jesus? What does he do? Um, he died for our sins. Yep, because he's our... Savior. So the gospel shows our... Savior. Savior. There you go. 
So we have the Gospels, those four books of the Bible that talk about what Jesus did. And the whole Gospel is all the good news. Jesus has taken away our sins. SOS shows our Savior. Okay, good. How about this one, binding key? This was not the best. The, our answers were not the best for this on the test. Max? Um, you don't forgive someone. Why? Why would because I ever they, not forgive someone? Because they repeatedly done bad things. Mm -hmm. And what won't they do? They won't say sorry. Yeah, exactly. It's our duty to declare to, declare to someone who is unrepentant that they are not forgiven. So someone who does something wrong and says, nope, I didn't do anything wrong. Okay, binding key, locking key. So if you don't know that one, it might be on the final test. When I say it might be on the final test. It might be. It might be. I've, we haven't written the final test yet, but if I had to place a wager, I would say it's probably going to be on there. And if you know this one, that's good. This is also in the catechism, so you can, you can study this on your own too. How about the loosing key then? Gabe? Someone from their sins because they're being repeated. Yeah, you're reminding someone of the forgiveness that they have in Jesus. Yep, awesome. So that's the loosing, the unlocking key. Cool. How about this one? Jesus' act of obedience. This will be on the final test. This will be on the final test. This will be on the final test. So it's not a might be. This is like, will this will be on the final test. This is like, you know, um, if the que if question number four about why will you get to heaven is 1A, this is probably not too far behind um, because it's part of the answer to that question. Intent. What's Jesus' act of obedience? Emma? Oh. oh. Jesus actively obeying the law. Yes, Jesus keeping the law in our place. Jesus being perfect. And I know Lillian was about to say that too. So, job, Lillian. Yes, this will be on the final test. You will, I'm trying to think how we'll do it, but you might even have to write this. Jesus living perfectly in our place. Yeah, Max? Uh, no, nothing. Oh, okay. You said your hand raised. How about this one? Jesus' passive obedience. Max. Um, there you is go. It Jesus. Dying on the cross. For Boom. Jesus willingly suffering the suffering and torment of hell. We, enduring the suffering and torment of hell that we deserve. Yep. Him dying on the cross. Him experiencing hell. Any questions? Jesus, active and passive obedience. No? So we're going to get this 100% on the test, right? Yes? I hope so. I, get, yep. I hope I get a 100. Yeah. And if you don't get 100 overall, well, these ones you can get 100 on, these questions. To review. We're going to go through it again as well. Have confidence. You, you know this. You know what the Bible says. And the Lord's Prayer. Uh -huh. If you don't know the Lord's Prayer, uh, mm -hmm. go home and work on this every night until you can say I it. I say it every night. Good. That's good. Okay, let's talk about something else. Sound good? Okay. Any, well, uh, any further questions, I suppose, about the test? It was not our best test overall so far. I guess I haven't looked at Seal and Emma's tests yet. Um, not our best test overall, though. Uh, so keep studying. Um, just asking for effort. Uh, you, you committed to, to confirmation. You committed to, to growing in your faith. So uh, hold firm to that commitment and keep, keep doing our assignments faithfully and, and studying hard, okay? 
All right, today we are going to be talking about Lent. Flip over the sheet of paper that you received yes. to the, the bright colored side. This is the church year. So remember, we kind of just like how we've got spring and summer and fall and winter. Yeah. We have seasons of the church year, different time and periods. Christmas. So Epiphany. during December, we were in Advent, uh -huh. which is getting ready for Christmas. Yes. Then after Christmas, it's Epiphany, which is all about Jesus appearing. Then after Epiphany, we are in Lent. Lent. The purple color, that deep color. This is what Lent is. Uh, let's see. Who will, let's do some reading. Max, will you please read that first paragraph, Sila's second paragraph? Uh, okay. The season of Lent is a somber and meditative season during which we reflect on our sinful condition, what we deserve because of our sin. And all that Jesus sacrificed to rescue us to reflect, to reflect a more muted tone during this season. Some of our mo most joyous expressions of praise, such as Alleluia, are not used. The royal color purple is a color symbolizing penitence. It is used to remind us of King Jesus, who died to pay the punishment of our sins deserved, so that we would not have to suffer in them. That's what Lent is. Things look a little different in church during Lent. What are some things that you've noticed that are a little different, like the past month? See them? You guys wear black. Okay. Instead of white. Yeah. On Sundays, we'll still wear white, but during the midweeks, okay, yeah, we wear black. Why do you think that is? To represent ash. That's part of it, maybe, yeah. Um, it, helps it, it helps us stick out as we think about our repentance and the seriousness that our sins carry. Other things you've noticed, Max? You had your hand up. Uh, I don't know. Okay, don't know. Other things you've noticed that look different, sound different, feel different. What have we been doing Wednesday nights? No confirmation class. Okay. <laughs> Why haven't we been having confirmation class? Because of then. Okay, what are we doing instead, Gabe? <laughs> yeah, we're having some midweek meditations, a little extra time to think about what Jesus did for us. What are we doing at those midweek meditations? We're reading through something. Taking a little chunk at a time. Yep, what part of the Bible? Five little chunks talking about something, a specific story in the Bible. It's in the New Testament. Yep. Jesus' life, I guess. Yep. Specifically, which part of Jesus' life? Yeah. The last 24 hours, pretty much. His death? Yeah. It's in all the Gospels. Yeah. It's kind of all over, I guess, in the New Testament. And in the old. I think they said it in like in John and in Matthew or something. Yep. Yeah. And in Mark and in Luke. They all talk about it. And you see it in Acts and you see it in Romans and you see it in the Corinthians. And it's always talk of Jesus' death and resurrection. Good. Other things you've noticed that are different. You see one of them in this reading. There's a specific word that we're not saying right now. Hallelujah. Yeah, we're not saying hallelujah. And this this explains um, hallelujah is a, a, a big word for praise. It's very happy and joyous. And we still do praise God. We still are, but we omit, we, we don't use this word um, because we want to focus on just how much our sins cost and, and the price Jesus had to pay. So instead of saying hallelujah, 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 during the gospel acclamation, we, we sing something else. Um, Praise to you, O risen Lord. King of endless glory. There we go. Um, okay. 
One more thing maybe you've noticed, and maybe you should just always try and think about this whenever you're in church. What do you notice about the banners? What color are they? White. Wait, purple. White. Uh, yeah, the banners on the side are purple, right? I was thinking the tablecloth. The tablecloth is still white. Yes. Yes. The two banners are purple. Why? Because that's the color of Lent. Yes. So if you ever want to know what season are we in, look at the colors. So wait, so when it's Easter, the banners will be white. Yep. And during Christmas, they were white. When it's Pentecost, it'll be red. Mm -hmm. And in Sunday after Pentecost, it would be green. Yep. So like all summer, it'll be green pretty much (laughs) because that'll be during the Sundays after Pentecost. Okay, great. So during Lent, Lent is 40 days long. Not Starting at Ash Sunday. Wednesday and going until Easter, but that is not Maybe enough days if you counted it. It doesn't include the Sundays. You're right, Max. Um, okay, so beginning of Lent, we started, we're going to look at some bulletins. Um, so Max and Sila, you can, Max, you scoot over one. You can work with Sila. Yeah, Christian. Wednesday one. Gabe, Emma, whoops, pass those down. Share something else. I don't know if I'll be able to, to show people who are online, but that's okay. Oh, nope, maybe I can. Here we go. There we go. So this is the Ash Wednesday bulletin. Yep. Um, which looks a little different than our normal bulletins, right? Yeah. See the, the dust and the ashes. Um, this is the first day of Lent, so it's very somber. Pastor and I were black. Uh, we already had this. Does anyone remember the special thing that we had? Well, what did we do on Ash Wednesday? Everyone walked up to the front of church. Yeah. Sila, what happened? Mm-hmm. Like, like, yeah, the imposition of ashes is what it's called. The imposition of ashes. Why did we do that? Um, Read the paragraphs. You don't know. On page five. On page five at the top. Okay. Max, will you, well, Christian, will you read that paragraph on the top of page five for us? I'll help you with the hard words. The ancient practice. Of imposing ashes on the forehead of the faithful goes Ash Wednesday at San. The church father, Tertullian, Tertullian, nice. Um, writes the practice as a public expression of repentance and of our human frailty. Fragility, that, yeah. That stands in the need of Christ. The ashes remind us forcefully of our need for redeeming grace as they recall words from the right. A Christian burial, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Words that will someday be spoken over us all. Today we will follow this tradition and encourage everyone who would like to see the ashes to make their way to the front of the chamber. So we do this, why? To forcefully remind us of our sins. Yeah. And when we're reminded of our sins, what else are we reminded of? Um. Our need for grace. Yeah. And what is that grace that we receive? That Jesus on the cross for us. And what did he do before he died? Came back, we were able to go back. Before he died, what did he do? He sacrificed himself. Before that? During those whole 33 years before he died? He was preaching and doing miracles. Yep. And as he did that, he was staying perfect. Yep. And then, yeah, he rose in the story. Okay. So that's, you know, Ash Wednesday, basically start of Lent, uh, shows us our, our need for a savior, shows us our repentant hearts, um, knowing that God doesn't need to have mercy on us. We don't deserve it, but yet he does. That's Ash Wednesday. Um, during the midweek services, we've been just some midweeks. This is this upcoming one. So, oh, that was a great toss. 
Medium toss. You did a good toss. It, it, Knocked it down your cup. Slide tackled it. Um, so during the midweeks, we've been doing this special order of service. It's called Compline. Um, you notice there's like music and songs and it sounds a little different. Um, it's more just meditative. And then we've been doing this thing on page four at the bottom. Is this happening yet? No, it's this one, Zena. It's bulletin. It's limited edition. It is limited edition. <laughs> <laughs> On page four at the bottom, what do we do during the midweek, Sila? Yeah, we read through the account of Jesus' final hour. Yep. And um, so we'll do that during the midweek. Great. And then after the midweeks, we get to, well, I don't have a bulletin for this, so you're online. We get to this day in the church here. It's called Palm Sunday. Oh, yeah. That's where, we get the, that's where you get the ashes from, right? Yes, Max. Excellent. We get our ashes from this day and something that takes place on this day. This is, if you've never seen Palm Sunday before, I think you all have. But if you hadn't, you would say that was kind of a strange service. Um, big bulletin. So big, first of all, big bulletin because lots of hymns. Um, the reason there's a lot of hymns is because of what the service looks like. Basically, it starts off with a procession. People walk into the church. And what are they carrying when they walk into the church? Branches. Palm branches. Yeah, because on Palm Sunday, we celebrate Jesus entering Jerusalem. Uh, the, the week before he died, basically. And people had palm branches and they were singing uh, Hosanna to God in the highest. Um, so we start the service with that. We do a little devotion. And then after that, we go back through all of the passion history again. We sing songs in between. So palm Sunday, we do both. Uh, celebrating Jesus entering to Jerusalem. And we also just go back through the Passion History. And then Max was right. Those ashes from Ash Wednesday come from Palm Sunday palms. A year later, uh, we, we turn them into ashes and then we use that. Uh, so kind of cool. Questions on Ash Wednesday? Or questions on oh, anything so far? So now you... I don't know. You have a little bit better idea of uh, when this comes up, you'll, you'll know what to expect. Okay. Then after Palm Sunday, we get to another day in the church here. It is Holy called Thursday. either Maundy or Holy Thursday. And Holy Thursday is the start of basically it's like one big long worship service that goes Thursday, Friday, Sunday. It's basically like one service. We just do it on different days. And we're going to celebrate. Yeah, go ahead. And during these three services, we celebrate Jesus' time in the upper room with his disciples and, and instituting the Lord's Supper and uh, Garden of Gethsemane. That's like one part of it. And then his suffering and death and his resurrection. So it's like three services in one over the course of three days. We call it the tritium. It's a big fancy Latin word that means three, basically, uh, because it takes place over three days. Um, but this is a, a practice that's been in the church for a long time, doing these three days. It's like the, the high point of the whole year, basically. Um, so you can see this, this big paragraph, each different part is described. Uh, let me share the Holy Thursday bulletin. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Gabe, are you up to read? Yes. Let's just start reading down these paragraphs. We'll each take one. So you can start after six weeks of Lent. After six weeks of Lent, the church year has now reached its climax. We've come to the celebration of the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the celebration for which we've been preparing throughout Lent. Now we focus on what makes Jesus the Christ. 
And then you want to take the next paragraph for us? We yes. see him suffer. We see him suffer and die for our sins and for the sins of the world. And we see him rise triumphantly on Easter morning to assure us that our salvation is complete. The victory is won. Prior to the fourth century, Easter Day itself included all three emphases, Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. But the early church fathers decided that it might be wise to spread those three days, emphasis, but out over three days. Max, next paragraph. Um, where were they again? Here, right here. Um, and resurrection of our Lord. No, nope, right here, right here. Oh, I was looking at the. Oh, why are there two mouses? Two. Okay. Well, and so Holy Monday, Thursday was formed to commemorate the beginning of Christ's humble suffering as he gathers in the upper room, washes his disciples' feet, institutes the Lord's suppers, then proceeds to the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane. Gethsemane or prayer. Betrayal and rest. See Good Friday. See what, see what? <laughs> Good Friday was set aside to find him the anticipated Christ's passion as he is put on trial before Pontius Pilate. You see that Scourge. One? Scourge and crucified on the cross. He speaks only seven times before he dies. Christian? Then Easter Sunday celebrates his victory over death and our guarantee of eternal life. These days have long been understood as the climax of the church of the year. Together they form a union. Therefore, as we celebrate these three holy days, our worship will form a union. What follows is a single service celebrated over three days, which will take us through our Savior's sufferings to his glorious triumph by Christ. Okay, last paragraph. Yep, because these three services. Oh, I think that's okay. Uh, because these three services from one unit, we'll notice some unusual things. First, there is no benediction after parts one and two. That's the Lord bless you and keep you, Lord, make his face shiny. Be here do that part. Keep going. The benediction will occur at the end of Easter service. Secondly, after parts one and two, the congregation is asked to leave the church in silence in order to contemplate what we are witnessing. Okay, so that's. That's uh, the tritium, these three days of celebration. Questions so far? I'm hoping this is connecting some dots and things that you've seen in the past and things that you'll see in the next few weeks. Okay, cool. Um, another cool thing about Holy Thursday is we do this stripping of the altar thing. Um, our service will also feature the stripping of the altar. The altar, which symbolizes Christ, is stripped in token of Jesus' abandonment by his disciples in Gethsemane. This action of ceremonially stripping the altar prepares the chancel and the congregation for Good Friday. Okay, so that's Holy Thursday. Yes, Emma. So since it's technically one service, do we have communion at one of them or all of them? So we'll only have it at Holy Thursday. But a turkey. Cool. We'll only have it at Holy Thursday, I believe, this year, but traditionally the, it's also at the Easter service as well on Sunday. But I guess that's a matter of preference. Good, Good Friday. question. Okay, everyone take 30 seconds and look at the turkey. You can go stand up and look at the it. Go ahead. Oh. It's out the window. Wait, there's a turkey? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's what you, I thought you were talking about person. No, oh, no, no, there's a turkey. Oh, yeah. Why? There is a turkey. Oh, God. There's a turkey. Someone got there's a turkey. Someone got there's like a 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. I can see everyone over here. There's a turkey here if you haven't gathered people online. Okay, good Friday then. So this is part two of the. What is that big fancy word for these three celebrations? Starts with the T, it's at the top of the page. 
Um, Tridium. Tridium. Yep. Tridium. Awesome. Uh, Good Friday is uh, special. We use the seven words that Jesus spoke from the cross. And there's like some readings and hymns that go with that too. Um, very somber service. We told about at the very end of the service on page um, 15, go to page 15. Very unique thing that you'll hear, see on good Friday. There we go. Something called the strepitus. Who's a Latin scholar in here? Gabe, Latin man. Okay, what does strepitus mean? If you just read that first par first the paragraph under the word strepitus, it'll tell you on page 15. You can be really smart and sound very intelligent. So Gabe, what does strepitus mean? What? Yeah, I have one more page to go. Page 15. You're on the wrong bulletin. Oh, Good Friday bulletin. Like Christian, our our uh, substitute Latin scholar, loud noise. Okay. Basically, what happens is you drop a book, and it's really loud in the back of the church. Oh, that's it. Loud. Kind of like that. Yep. Like that. Yep. Wait, no. It's got to be a little um, higher. Like that. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, well, books. I uh, Emma, will you read that paragraph? Strepitus. The strepitus is a Latin word meaning loud noise. It is meant to symbolize the earth shaking and rock splitting as Jesus' death and foreshadows the ringing of the two as the sun was rolled away and the earth shook as Jesus rose. Awesome. And then we depart in silence. Okay. One cool service that not every church does, but that we do, is Easter Vigil. Please. This Which is Saturday shot. night. I got shot. Saturday night. It's not part of the tritium, but it's a very ancient service. Um, it's kind of weird. There's basically four parts to it. And you basically just read through the story of God being awesome. So it's like creation and the flood and the exodus and I'm trying to what else. Um, the Red Sea. Okay, um, Ezekiel. So, so it's just a bunch of other cool readings and showing that God's awesome, basically. And there's interesting music that you probably haven't heard before. You only hear it once a year. So it's really cool. I would highly recommend come checking it out. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And then, of course, the Festival of the Resurrection of our Lord. Very nice, Max. The full name for Easter, the Festival of the Resurrection of our Lord. Very nice. Um, on this day, we celebrate Jesus returning to life. Very cool. Wait. So wonderful hymn. That's last year's bulletin. We're not done with this year's yet. Because, well, we're not to that point yet. Okay. And you know what Easter is. Um, thoughts, questions, comments about Holy Week, about Lent, about life, about the law about the gospel. Feeling good? Feeling like you have a better grasp on what Lent is and what it looks like? Yep. And you have a bunch of bulletins. So many bulletins. Uh, it's in a big one. You can make stacks of the bulletins. No. Like buy, buy the buy the bulletin. The bulletin. Yeah, you can. Emma is going to be a black market big, bulletin dealer the for big, big bulletin. Wednesday night's bulletin. Oh, hey, I started a black market bulletin. Apple sauce. <laughs> apple sauce. I camp actually kind of believe it. Selling apple sauce. <laughs> no, nah, camp sauce. You were there, you were there. You know what I mean. Apple sauce. Um, so you can make a stack Apple of each sauce. kind of one. Actually, what honestly, um, Emma and this pile can stay. We don't need the other one. Uh, you can throw the rest of the bullets in the way. Just take two So much paper wasted. So much bulletins. Yep. But you did some good work, right? So much big okay. bulletins. And Let's, um, so any other questions? Are we feeling good about Lent? All right, why will you go to heaven? Three things. Because, well, first thing. Why will I go to heaven? Jesus died for our sins. First thing. Jesus, we are all sinful. We're all sinful. Okay, we're sinful. Three things. Why will I go to heaven? 
Jesus God died for the No, cross. what did he do before he died? What did he do before he, he died? He lived a perfect he life. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for our sins. Died on the cross. And then he, he rose again from yes. the dead. Yes, and a passage for that? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Awesome. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thanks for letting us study your word today as we think about uh, the ending of your life and uh, the new beginning of our life in heaven. Uh, You're such a great and merciful God that you forgive our sins, even though we don't deserve it. Uh, Thank you for sending Jesus to live perfectly in our place, to die and to rise. Uh, We need that, Lord. Uh, Be with us this week. Help us to continue to live lives that show our love for you. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, wonderful. I hope you all learned something. I know I learned in preparation for this. So, good time. People online, peace out. See you later. Goodbye, Gabe. Bye, everybody.